Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung. I missed you guys last week. I was on vacation with no Wi-Fi, no cell phone. It was good to take a break. This week we're going to talk about constipation. Why am I constipated? You know, there's millions of people who have constipation and some of them even um, don't realize that they have a issue with bowel movements. Some women come in and they think it's normal to have uh, bowel movements every other day, every third day, every fifth day. Uh, they think it's normal uh, processes because they've been constipated for the entire life, right? So if you look at your bowel movements, you should have at least one full bowel movement per day, okay? Sometimes up to two, or sometimes some people will have three, but the three bowel movements should be formed. Right? It shouldn't be loose and floating and so forth. So having proper bowel movement is very important because it helps you to detoxify and gets rid of things that should not be in your body uh, for extended periods of time. So when you look at constipation, you have to say what is, are some of the underlying causes. Uh, one of them is IBS. So a lot of people have irritable bowel syndrome, but the number one cause for irritable bowel syndrome is something called SIBO. Uh, or small intestinal bowel overgrowth. There is a particular gas that is produced when you have SIBO, and this gas is methane gas. Now you can actually do a test for this where you drink a solution and they track the gases over a time frame to determine if you have SIBO. So if you have excessive methane gas, then you may have something called SIBO, and methane gas causes constipation. So you might actually have a physical issue with your GI tract, right? It's important to find out whether you have this or not. The other thing is a lot of people have parasites, parasitic infections. They suck up the nutrients. You make your iron deficient. So it's important to rule out parasitic infections in the GI tract also. Uh, the next one is sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, balance. So our body is able to go through periods of stress and then come out of that stress and go into relaxation. So let's say you have a speech to make, you have a test to take, you might be anxious and nervous uh, for a short period of time and then once that's done then you should be able to go into a relaxation state. But there are a lot of people who are constantly in that sympathetic state. They're constantly in overdrive. The heart feels like they're racing, hands are always sweaty, they just can't calm it down. When you are in that state, you're not thinking about going to the bathroom, right? So going to the bathroom uh, requires a neurological input, right? A balance in your neurological system for that to happen. So your, your, your fight or flight or sympathetic, parasympathetic systems need to be in balance for you to have proper bowel movements. The other one is anxiety and fear and stress. So people who are very anxious or they have uh, a lot of stress uh, it can create uh, problems with bowel movements. Um, the other one is magnesium deficiencies. A lot of people have mineral deficiencies and they don't have proper magnesium levels, uh, which will prevent them from having normal bowel movements and normal bowel function. The other one is leaky gut or, or intestinal permeability. There are a lot of people who damage their GI tract from all the herbicides and pesticides in the foods, uh, to parasitic infections, to gluten sensitivity and dairy sensitivity. So you have a lot of people who have what we call leaky gut. When you have leaky gut, things are not absorbing properly in the GI tract and stay stagnant. So you have to be able to get uh, that leaky gut healed with nutritional protocols. Okay. The other uh, things that we look at is, is the patient sleeping? Are they fully hydrated? It's so important to get the proper amount of water throughout the day for you to be fully hydrated. Because if you're dehydrated, your body is always trying to reabsorb water and it may happen in the bowels. So you need proper hydration for you to have normal bowel movements, okay? So that's very important. So, what do we need to do to improve bowel movement, right? Normal function, daily. Number one, we have to be able to rest, relax, and sleep. 
Two, we have to balance your sympathetics. And the way you can do that is if you're always in a heightened state, right, or you always feel like you're constipated and you're just kind of going, you can stimulate your parasympathetic system through the vagal system, right? So you can do humming, gargling, gagging, humming out loud, singing out loud, anything that really stimulates this area, right? Uh, drinking water itself is a vagal stimulation. So singing, uh, uh, gargling, very vigorously, right, in the shower. Drink, uh, you take the water from the shower head and you're gargling really loud, uh, making the water spout out of your mouth to the point where you feel like your eyes are tearing. It's important to do that to balance your sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. If you have anxiety and fear, um, you may need uh, counseling, uh, but you also, we also do something called neural feedback in our office, which is fantastic for anxiety and depression. So managing that is also very important. Uh, magnesium. The form of magnesium that works well for a constipation is magnesium citrate. There are different forms of magnesium, but for, in particular for constipation, it's magnesium citrate. Okay? I use another product called Aloferox in our office, which is uh, fantastic for uh, getting people to go uh, to the bathroom in the short term. Okay? Meditation, relaxation is very important. Um, another one is coffee enema. If you really are constipated and you're not going, it's like three days, four days, five days. I have someone come in the other day, seven days without a bowel movement, right? Coffee enemas can be a start. So coffee enemas, if you look it up, uh, often is used for people who have cancers in the alternative world, but it can, it can be used to stimulate the vagal system, right? So if you do a coffee enema, it expands the lower bowel, and then that stimulation will help, uh, uh, help you evacuate, so have a bowel movement. Um, so look it up, look up uh, coffee enemas and vagal stimulation. So you have to do all these steps for you to get better. But if you have SIBO, right, and you have a methane gas that's elevated, or if you have a parasite, or if you have a leaky gut, you probably will need some help, right? And that's what we do in our office. We take care of those patients who are very chronic, who have issues, um, that can't be resolved any other way, right? At the end of the day, you need to have a bowel movement in order to detoxify. Uh, if you don't have those daily bowel movements, you need to be concerned because uh, your health uh, is being impacted by the lack of bowel movements, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 1230 on the healthy side. Have a great day.